Before we get into this review, I just want to thank all of you for your patience for it. I really do appreciate that. As you know, our playthrough while we were playing this game, our dog Ace got very, very sick. And we eventually had to make the choice to um, send him across the Rainbow Bridge. And it was a really tough choice to make. And, uh, and so that's why it took me a while to edit these videos and to get all the episodes up and to now do this review. So thank you all for your patience. I really do appreciate giving me the time to, uh, to deal with real life stuff and, and pain um, before I could you know get back to some fun things like this. So thank you very much. And also a big thank you to the person who this review wouldn't even be possible without and he wants to remain nameless you know, and, and, and be anonymous, which is really cool of him. But he had an extra PS5 earlier this year and gifted it to me. And it was really, really cool of him. A friend of mine from back in L.A. And it meant the world to me that he gifted this to me. I'm just like a very small, you know, streamer and YouTuber. And uh, and that was the coolest thing ever. And then when I didn't have enough money to get a game I really wanted, which was Alan Wake 2 and Spider-Man. I was going to buy Spider-Man because obviously my friend gifted the PS5 so I could play Spider-Man. And I wasn't able to, I was like, all right, I'm just going to get that and I'll get Alan Wake later, even though that's the game I really, really want. And this friend uh, actually donated a copy of Spider-Man as well. So this wouldn't have been possible, this playthrough, this experience, and this review without him. And so I want to give a big thanks to him and again to all of you so very much and, uh, and dedicate this episode to Ace, uh, my best friend. And I hope you're up in heaven with Echo right now, looking down at us. And rolling your eyes that I'm still making these silly videos at my age. <laughs> so thank you so much and thank you all for watching. Rose into the bone. There's darkness in your soul. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today is my review of Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac and Marvel Games. And boy, is this going to be a mixed bag. <laughs> you know, I know there's a lot of people out there that really love this game and they were really on board with every aspect of it. And that's great. And I'm glad those people had such a great experience and great time. And although I enjoyed the playthrough because the spectacle of the game, I actually really loved. I thought a lot of the boss battles, like with Sandman at the opening was really cool, with Lizard, and even with Venom at the end, even though there's story elements that the more I thought about, I was like, yeah, this just doesn't work for me as a interpretation of Venom um, because it doesn't compete with, you know, other things that I do like about the character, and we'll get into that, but I still enjoyed the spectacle. I thought the boss fights themselves were really great mechanically and just, you know, the fun I had playing the game. And I know there's been some complaints about, oh, you know, Spider-Man has less gadgets that he's using. And it's like, yeah, but he had some other upgrades and like super moves, like with the, the four arms coming out or with Miles with his electricity and stuff. And then later with Spider-Man or Peter, you know, with the black costume and then the anti-venom costume. And yes, we're going to talk about full spoilers. So prepare for that. Um, if you haven't seen, you know, played the game yet, then please do go play it yourself and judge for yourself, obviously. Um, but also my videos are up on this channel there are, you know 21 episodes it took us and that's strongly edited because i really went and did everything in the game i wanted to experience everything even run around on the baseball field and get that achievement i wanted to do it all <laughs> so so yeah i really sunk my teeth into this game uh, no pun intended but we are going to talk about spoilers and uh, and with that though like i was saying the game itself the mechanics like the funness of it and having uh, maybe a few less gadgets yeah that's a kind of a hindrance but you got the wings and you know they put other things in the game and then gave you those upgrades with the suits and stuff so i was like eh, it's enough of a balance for me to where even though i felt like i was just button mashing at time and i wasn't really you know doing any strategy at, at, at moments um sometimes the button mashing was a hindrance and it got me killed so i had to think strategy so i thought there was a good balance of it on a technical level and because pretty much it carried a lot of what the first game and the Miles game did really well and brought it over and just added a couple things to it and expanded the map and did what a typical sequel did. It played it safe in certain areas, but I think it that's okay. You know, it needed to. And then they kind of took the risks with one big element of the story and, and, and uh, specifically, but then the other ones, they did a really good job, you know, uh, whereas the one they took a risk on, I don't feel like the risk worked for me as a Venom fan. And like I said, we're going to dive into that. So, with all that said, you know, I just want to get out of the way that technically, graphically, I thought this game was great. You know, I want to because I'm more of a story guy. So that's more of the thing for me. Story and character. That's what I review stuff on. So the technical stuff, I'm not a genius when it comes to video game stuff. I play video games, but I can't break every single thing down. I can just tell you my experience and my experience besides a few glitches in the game where I glitched off the map or died or something like that. 
Some of them were funny. Some of them were annoying. Some of them happened at, you know, the worst times, but there wasn't a ton of them. And at least for, in my experience playing on the PS5, you know, I had a pretty smooth gameplay for the most part with a few exceptions, uh, but none of them really took me out of the game to the point where I got super frustrated with the game. So for me, that's still a win that I got through the game pretty smoothly, you know, with a few bumps, um, but still enjoyed like the gameplay. And, uh, and even by the end, even at times when I was button mashing to get through hordes of symbiotes and things, I still found myself enjoying that experience. Um, so I will say Insomniac for me killed it as far as immersion and the experience and the, you know, the, the gameplay itself and the mechanics, like all that stuff. I really dug and I thought the graphics were great. The game is beautiful looking. It looks really, really good. So, I mean, definitely a reason to buy a PS5, especially if you're a Spider-Man fan. So I would say that is all the things it had going for it. And then where it hurt for me is pretty much just on the Harry Osborn and Venom stuff because I am actually a big Harry Osborn fan and I loved his journey in the comics as, you know, as tragic as it was in the comics, his journey was fantastic and it ended so heroically. And then recently when Nick Spencer brought in like a cloned Harry or whatever that came in and married Lily Hollister and had Stanley and you had a new life and everything and then died again, he, that clone also died a hero. So for me, it's always great knowing that no matter what, even in Spider-Man 3 by Sam Raimi, you know, Harry dies a hero. And I think that's great for his character that he, no matter what universe or whatever, he is destined to go down swinging as a hero. And that was definitely missing here. Um, he does choose at the end to like say, all right, Pete, take the symbiote, get me out of here. So he does make that decision, um, but he doesn't do the sacrifice play. He doesn't do anything like that, um, you know, to to kind of shine. He doesn't really get a moment to shine, in my opinion, by the end of the story, Harry. And that's a real bummer because I feel like every other character in these Insomniac games are done so well. Even Screwball, as annoying as she is, and Taskmaster, like they pull them off and do them re with respect to those characters. Screwball's annoying in the comics. She's annoying in the video game. Taskmaster's cool and mysterious in the comics, and he's fun in the video game to go up against and stuff in the first game. So you, but in all these characters, you have Otto Octavius as Dr. Octopus. You have Norman Osborn gearing up to possibly with this new G formula that he's making for Harry, possibly to become a goblin and possibly Harry to become a goblin in the next game. And who knows, maybe that'll be the game Harry has this big moment in. But then that makes me wonder, why have Harry in this one? And so we'll get into why I feel that way here in a little bit, because I know some people say, oh, but the story and Peter and... Yeah, but I have a thing that I'm going to say about that, and we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, but I thought the friendship stuff was handled well, like when they're going to the school at the beginning and they're going through their memories of, you know, uh, running through their school, like, you know, trying to steal something and everything. And all that was really fun. I, I like the friendship because that's classic Harry and Peter, right? Um, it was just introducing the symbiote stuff that at first I was like, okay, I'm on board. I'm willing to give this a try. But by the end, Venom is such a two-dimensional, boring I want to take over the world character that it just doesn't feel like Venom. It just doesn't feel like the character at all. And yes, it's an interpretation of the character, but it doesn't feel like a good interpretation. It doesn't feel like someone with any real depth. I thought Otto, you know, Otto Octavius in the first game had a lot of depth. He was the mentor of Peter and he had this reason for why he was going to release this dragon's breath and, you know, take down Osborne and all these things. Like he had motivation in that regard and venom's real motivation in this game is okay i bonded with harry and i've kept him alive now i'm curing him in a way by being bonded to him and he has this mission from his mother that he wants to heal the world i went to peter uh you know after harry you know got rid of me to save peter and then bonded with him and i liked what i was feeling there because he has more power and he has all this other stuff but he rejected me so i went back to harry to complete that mission of heal the world by using symbiote. So he has like a twisted version of what heal the world means. And I'm like, okay, that's, I get that. But it really, the execution is just put symbiotes on everybody and take over the planet. And then, then what? <laughs> I guess then the whole planet's healed. And, and then what would, you know, it's like what Thanos, what would he do? You know, and we actually saw what Thanos would do after he snapped his fingers. He went and had a little life somewhere. So what would Venom do after everyone's covered in symbiotes and there's no one left to heal? You know, um, so to me, I just really didn't dig it felt really two dimensional and maybe even one dimensional on some levels. And Harry is just a puppet by the end. He's just a guy who's 
along for the ride. You know, he's not really making some decisions. Sometimes he talks and he's like, no, I'm, I'm trying to complete what my mom's doing. But really, that's Venom, you know, uh, having a hold over Harry and twisting Harry's, you know, hopes and vision and mission uh, statement of wanting to complete his mother's work. And, uh, and that's really what that is. So Harry just feels like this thing that's there along for the ride, a passenger in a seat, you know, while the, the real threat is, is driving. And I didn't really appreciate that as a Harry Osborn fan. And I certainly didn't appreciate that as a Venom fan. And, um, and so, but aside from Venom real quick, I want to get to the other villains because all of them I thought were great. Even though the Mysterio, they were trying to reform him thing. I didn't, you know, at the end, I'm like, yeah, I don't know if you could do that, but it's a new world. It's a different Mysterio. So it's like, okay, fine. You, you're telling that story with him, with Miles going to those, you know, fun zone mirror places and, and interacting like that. I'm like, and saving people. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then you got um, all the, at the carnival, you had like, you know, all the different, uh, you know, villains of Spider-Man that were like, you know, put in the rides and stuff, um, which was really cool. I like that. Uh, that was really cool. Like Speed Demon and stuff. So it's like, okay, that's cool that they put in those little Easter eggs and they brought Tombstone back and tried to do a little redemption arc with him. And I felt like that was the theme of this story, right? It was, okay, let's, you know, Miles was on this mission to redeem people. If you notice a lot of Miles missions, um, it's that's his mission is like he wants to bring out the good side of the person he's up against. You know, he wants to bring out the good side of you know Mysterio in a way. Once he finds out he's like a victim in this situation, he wants to bring out, you know, I guess a better side in, in Martin Lee. And that was a great conclusion to that story arc as well, um, because he even says, like, I'm not going to forgive you, man. You killed my dad and you did a lot of horrible things, but. I'm not going to take revenge on you. You know, that's not the Spider-Man way. And I, I dug that for Miles. I was like, hey, that's great. That's real growth there. And that's a, a decision I feel like Peter would make in a similar situation. And I could tell as we were playing through the game that they are just setting up Miles to take over the mantle. I could just tell, you know, halfway through the game, I was like, that's definitely what they're going to do. And that's kind of what they do, but not really. I see a lot of people blown that out of proportion. And really what it is is Peter's just going to take some time out. He's, you know, I want to go have a normal life for a little while and not feel like I have to answer and respond to every 911 call out there because I know that there is someone out there who is very responsible, who has a good head on his shoulders, like I used to do when I was your age. And I think it's good to put it in your hands. And uh, and I'm sure at some point, because you're going to tell a goblin story next anyway, and they're going to bring Harry back probably and Norman and stuff, you're going to need Peter for that story anyway. So when people are freaking out like, oh my God, he's gone, he's gone. I'm like, no, he's not. There's probably going to be another solo game between now and the next Spider-Man. And then that'll be the like the end, you know, the final chapter or whatever that Dr. Octopus says in the post credit. So for me, yeah, I, I you know, I, I liked some of that stuff. I was like, this is good. And the fact that we got... Um, you know, Craven, who they did so well in this game, they basically made him like Bane from the Batman Nightfall story where he's like, all right, I'm going to go around and just, uh, and this one though, he's not releasing the villains for Spider-Man to fight and wear himself down on. He's releasing the villains to hunt them down himself and work his way up to Spider-Man. And I thought that was very Craven. <laughs> I was like, that's great. That is Craven to a T where he's just like about the hunt. Um, I didn't like that he had minions though. That kind of softens his hunt a little bit. But for the most part, he did the dirty work and he killed some villains and they cleared some villains off the map. And I'm not I'm OK with that, too, because it's a video game universe. I saw people getting mad like, oh, dude, they killed Scorpion and Vulture and all these characters. And I'm like, yeah, but you weren't going to probably bring them back for the next game anyway. And the next game is probably going to be the last one after whatever the next solo game is. So why not? Like, I'm OK with movie universes and video game universes, you know, killing characters or buttoning some things up because those have to end those can't just keep going forever as much as we want them to comics do and because comics go on forever that's why we don't like a lot of them sometimes <laughs> we like the stuff we read and then after that we're like whoa what is this crap why are they changing everything um or why are they putting everything back you know we especially spider-man fans a lot of us know what that is like right now in spider-man comics with zeb wells there are some people that like it and there's a lot of us that are like this is undoing everything nick spencer did why would you do this so um so I don't know. So, you know, for the villains, though, you know, I liked Craven a lot. I liked Lizard. I liked what they did with a lot of these guys. And for that, on that level, again, I give this game praise. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Technical level, you know, fun level, all that immersion. I loved. And then even a lot of the villains. But what I was saying earlier, Dr. Octopus, it's Otto Octavius gets to be Dr. Octopus. And then you have Kirk Connors gets to be the Lizard, even though they kind of did a convenient, you know, I hate when they do this sometimes in stories where they're trying to cut corners and, and tie everything together. But it's fine. It's another universe, so it's fine. Where uh, Connors' arm gets ripped off by the symbiote, 
making him kind of the first person the symbiote bonded to. Um, yeah, okay, and it ripped his arm, or they had to cut his arm off or whatever, and it's like, ah, that's a little too clean and convenient to tie all this together and learn where his arm got cut off from, but it's also fine. It's a video game universe, it's fine. You want to put some of those in there just because, and, and that's okay. Um, but you get Dr. Connors gets to be the lizard. Norman Osborn, like I said, he might end up becoming a goblin. You got Craven's brother who gets to be Chameleon, and you even got freaking Cletus Cassidy, who gets, even though they don't say him by name, but they kind of set him up. He's the flame, you know, and they set up the carnage storyline and that he, you know, burned a building down. I'm guessing St. Estes at one point he got burn marks on him. He's got the spirals, you know, carved into him and stuff. And so, and he wants a red symbiote and he gets one by the end of the game, by the end of the side mission. So you got all these characters that get to be their villains. Speedball gets to be Speedball. Taskmaster gets to be Taskmaster. Felicia Hardy gets to be Black Cat. Uh, you know, and you get all, Rhino gets to be Rhino. You get all these characters that get to be them. But then Venom can't be Eddie Brock. And that I don't understand. And so that will be what we wrap up here, which is you have Eddie Brock absent from this game, not even mentioned in an Easter egg, unless they're talking at one point, uh, I think MJ says, oh, there's a new reporter at, my, at the Daily Bugle that's getting more scoops than I am. Maybe that's Eddie, but they don't say his name. Um, so he could be in this world. And I know some people are like, oh, dude, wait for the DLC or the solo Venom game or blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but why? <laughs> like, sure, you can maybe try to post fix this decision of using Harry, but I feel like for this game, I can review it on its own before that DLC comes out and say for this game, the, the Harry thing didn't work for me. And I said a little bit why earlier, but the main thing is, is Harry ends the first game in a tank, uh, you know, a BAPTA tank or whatever <laughs> from Star Wars. And, uh, and he's in that tank and he's got the symbiote, you know, bonding to him. And then in this game, you know, he's got the suit and he's super powered and then it goes to Peter and then comes back and stuff. And it's like, yeah, OK, I guess you could have told that story and you needed the symbiote for it. Or you didn't have to have Peter get the black suit and you could have just had Harry at the end of the first game open his eye and there'd be like a goblin eye. And you see that he is injected with G formula, you know, whatever for, for goblin formula um, and, or the Oscorp formula. And then in this game, he's going back and forth between Harry and a giant goblin monster. And then he could maybe get other people to breathe in, you know, do what Octopus didn't do in the first game and get other people to breathe in this this formula too, an air, you know, a version that goes in the air and they become goblins too. And then you have to fight a bunch of goblins at the end. Because if you're just going to do mindless things like that, like it's just weird that they did symbiotes. Um, you know, I, I don't know. So, so to me, like the game ends where Harry began. He doesn't really have an arc. He starts, you know, the game or the, the end of the first game in a tank with the symbiote. And at the end, he ends in a coma and he doesn't really have an arc. The only thing that matters of him living is that Peter has been through so much. And after losing Ant-Man in the first game, you kind of don't want him to lose another person in this game. So Miles saves Harry, which is awesome. And I'm glad that happened. But I still look at it and go, yeah, but did it have to be symbiotes? It was certainly cool looking. Um, but I feel like you could have still told, you could have swapped out symbiotes for goblins and it would still be a similar storyline. You know, he could have been like, I'm healing the world. Everyone with the goblin formula doesn't have cancer anymore. doesn't have this. And you could have done symbiotes a completely different way or, you know, or whatever. Um, or you could have had it to where the goblin formula maybe comes from a strand of symbiote that they found. And that could set up a, th a third game or a spinoff game with Venom. And you can do it, you know, with Eddie and stuff. Cause my, my thing is, is, Everything else is so accurate. You know, the interpretation of Peter and Miles is really good. Interpretation of Craven and Chameleon and uh, Lizard and all these characters. And in the first game, Octopus and everyone, Norman, like everyone's so good and so well done. Even Harry as a character is really well done uh, on his own. But then Venom's the thing they change. And it's just like, so when people say, oh, you're just a butthurt Venom fanboy. And it's like, yeah, but all of every other fan, Craven, Black Cat, all of those fans got their character and we didn't really get ours. And that's kind of how this game feels. Like, yeah, it's a new interpretation of Venom and that's fine, but it's not one that I found that I ended up liking by the end. I found his mission and his goals very bland and two-dimensional and kind of boring. And uh, and then at the end, it just became almost a little frustrating to just swing down the street and just have symbiotes coming at you. I mean, it did elevate things where you're like, oh my God, okay, this is bad. We got to stop this before it spreads all over the world. So it does sell you on that. But it did at times, I'm just like, I just want to get through and get to the last mission and wrap up this game because I'm starting to make up my mind that I don't like this version of Venom. And what's really weird is they pull a lot of things from the comic books, 
from Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman's runs, uh, you know, particularly. And that was a run I was very critical of and I didn't really like all the way through, but only from like story moments and stuff. But ideas, I thought Ryan Stegman and Donny Cates had some really cool ideas. They added the spiral thing in. Um, they added, you know, even though I don't like Noel ultimately, but having like a symbiote god and everything and, a, you know, redefining what the planet is. Like they really, you know, jumped in with both feet on their ideas and took those leaps and risks. Whereas in this game, they aped all those ideas and didn't explain a single one of them. If you read the Donny Cates run, you would understand, okay, all those symbiotes have spirals because it kind of ties them to Null in a way. But then they never mention Null in this game at all. Maybe that's something they'll do in the, the Carnage DLC spinoff later um, with Cletus and you know the flame and all that stuff. And, and maybe they'll bring in a different version of Venom at that point. But why would a new version of Venom call himself Venom when it's bonded to Eddie? So maybe they'll do Toxin with Eddie Brock in this game. Like uh, Toxin was Eddie for a short time in the comic book. Maybe that's what they'll do and not do Venom per se. And I do hope they wrap up the Cletus stuff in a DLC. I saw some people say, no, they'll save it for the third game. And I don't want symbiotes in the third game. Just get it all done now in this DLC and wrap it up now, you know, um, and just go and tell your goblin story or whatever in the next game. And that's fine. And I think I'll probably like that better because this game I did not like as much as the first one. And that's because of the Venom thing. Like I felt like they dropped the ball so hard with Harry once you got to a halfway point in the game when Harry got the suit back. And that from then on, I didn't like Harry or Venom. Although Tommy Todd doing the voice, I'm like, I love Tony Todd. He kills it as the voice of Venom. But man, I would have loved him to be the voice of Eddie Brock Venom or just a better interpretation of this. Like this version of Venom, I just didn't like for this game. I didn't like it. They didn't pull it off for me. Um, and and I hopefully I listed some reasons why I feel that way. But really, I just felt like why Harry? The game st begins and ends with him, you know, kind of, incapacitated and weak and dying and now his dad has to come up with the the goblin formula to to revive him or keep him alive or whatever and he'll probably test it on himself in the next game and make norman the green goblin and then you know and then you'll have to perfect it to cure harry or something i don't know who knows what they're going to do that's on them but for me like with this game harry just had no arc and venom had no real arc and so for that it made them really boring on that level considering Doc Ock had, you know, a story and a, a reason. Even Craven did. And his death, by the way, that scene was awesome. We get to play as Venom and then you get to kill Craven. I'm like, that's amazing. That was probably the peak of the game for me right there, was playing as Venom, smashing through things. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to bounce back. Maybe I'm going to like this, you know, and I'm going to dig this some more. And then it kind of just, I don't know, petered out. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Miles going off and making his costume, which I really didn't love that costume, but... All that stuff and kind of how it wrapped up, I was just like, I don't know, man. Like, it, it didn't stick the landing as well as it started when the game starts. Because when the game started with Sandman and going all the way up to that part where you play as Venom, I was like 100% going, I love this, I love this, I love this, with a, a few minor nitpicks. But then once we started getting to that final act, I was like, man. And the, and like I said, you having all these references to Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman with the spirals you know, and the, and like the, the meteor rock or whatever, I guess that's not really them, but the wings, you know, even though I always say Donny Cates didn't come up with the wings and neither did him and Ryan Stegman, that was something that happened in the comics before. But a lot of people attribute that visual to the Donny Cates run with the wings and stuff with Ryan Stegman. So I get that, but there was a lot of things pulled from that run. And it turns out those guys didn't even get a special thanks or nothing in the credits. And I'm like, man, I, I get that it's a work for hire. You know, those guys work for Marvel and they do work for higher stuff. But so did Bendis when he came up with, uh, you know, uh, Miles and he gets a special thanks and all these other people get special thanks. And I'm like, they did a similar amount of work, you know, so that just felt weird to me, like to, to kind of snub them. And, and like I said, I'm critical of that run, but I still feel like credit is due where it's due. And there's a lot of visual stuff taken in this game from those comics for no reason because they don't explain it they don't explain the spirals they don't explain if there's like a higher being back on clintar or what they don't even say clintar i don't think and maybe in one of the writings or something and there's a couple extra messages you can hear if you click on some of the items you find or you know listen to some of the podcasts and stuff you get a little glimpse of stuff but nothing major and concrete that is delivered to you through the main story either and that's frustrating like i'm like man there's all this lore and you touch on almost none of it other than just showing it but without explaining anything. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. So everything was just used for cool visuals 
and not so much for the reason that they're used in the comic books, which is they have a, a purpose, right? And in this, they, the only purpose they had was, hey, remember this in the comics? This came out recently. And it's like, yeah, we do remember it. Where's the thank you credit for the people who put that in the comic books? Oh, it's not there? Okay. So for me, that all that Venom stuff was enough for me to, for it to hurt my feelings of this game in, in a negative way, obviously. And, uh, and and that's just me being critical and, and you know, being a Venom fan, obviously, but also being a Harry fan. That's the thing is, if I was just crapping on this as a Venom fan, I could understand, you know, and so I'm sure some people will say, dude, you're just a whiny fanboy, but it's like, dude, I, yeah, I've made 850 episodes about Venom, <laughs> you know, over the last six years. So yeah, I have a bias towards uh, towards Venom, obviously, but my favorite Spider-Man villain is Kraven, and they crushed it in the game with Kraven. I thought he was amazing, and Chameleon cameo was amazing. I love that, but I'm also a big Harry fan. And I was really let down by the execution of Harry and the fact that he didn't get a really big moment by the end, uh, other than just looking at Peter and saying, okay, I'm done fighting. Like, get me, I'm done. Get me out of this suit and it's going to kill me, but that's fine. But there wasn't like Harry doing anything. It's not like he went over and grabbed like the, the big generator that was both, you know, shooting electricity out. This wasn't like he grabbed it himself and took control of the Venom suit and defeated it himself or do anything like that. He didn't have any big moment. And so there was so many missed opportunities in this for cool things like that for the character. And they dropped the ball on all of them, I feel like. Um, his biggest moment was when you get to play as him and eat Craven's head off. And then after that, there's just nothing. He's just like a, a 2D cardboard cutout that you gotta go punch. Um, and and that's it. I mean, that's how thick his motivation and and uh, and goals are. And, and that's really frustrating as a, Harry fan as a Venom fan to see your characters favorite characters kind of reduced to something a lot less than what they deserve when every other character even Otto Octavius coming back in this game and Martin Lee and all these guys they get to be their characters and they get to hit new peaks with their characters or at least you know Martin Lee and and uh, Lizard and stuff like they get to peak and see new moments with them where you're like oh right awesome and even Scorpion being killed by Kraven I'm like wow but he he went down fighting he tried his best you know it's like Everyone I felt like got some level of respect on that front, but then Venom and Harry didn't, in my opinion. And that's why I'm critical and didn't like that part. So for me, when I see that this game didn't win any awards at the Game Awards, I can see fans voting and being and feeling like me on some level. Maybe they don't have the same reasons for not liking the game as I do, but I feel like when you have a character like Venom who went and made a solo movie without Spider-Man and made almost $900 million and proved that he's as much of a household name as Spider-Man and Peter Parker is on his own without Spider-Man. That shows the love that this character has worldwide and how people fell in love with Eddie Brock again, you know, through Tom Hardy and stuff. And then, so when you have a cartoon like Maximum Venom that came out that didn't have Eddie in it and people were critical of that, and before that you had, you know, Harry in the series, you know, uh, in Ultimate Spider-Man as Venom for a while and, and stuff, it's like people are always, especially Venom fans, are always going to rail a little bit against someone else being Venom because if you had Harry as Venom in this and he talked to the symbiote, and there was that communication between them, the way Eddie and, and the symbiote have, more people I think would have bought into this. I would have bought into it more, but you didn't. Venom was just this dominating force that pushed Harry down and took his his goal and twisted it and tried to bring it to life by taking over the world with symbiotes that just magically were spawned out of this little sliver of meteor. I don't know. I feel like to me, they dropped the ball on everything symbiote related in this game. And the fact that they're going to, you know, visually uh, have nods to all this great lore from the comic books that Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman worked really hard on that recent fans have fell in love with and to not even mention their names uh, or some of that lore and just have it in there just to have it in there is kind of kind of was weird. It was cool seeing, I was like, oh my God, they have the spirals. This one's blue, this one's red. They have Scream in the freaking game uh, as Mary Jane, of course, but I'm like, okay, I get it. New interpretations, fine. That's a little bit more heartbreaking. You get to have a moment with Mary Jane where she gets a symbiote scream and she gets to air her frustrations. Peter, this is how I feel. Like This is all the stuff I've been keeping up inside of me. I feel like it's your life and not mine. And every time I try to do something for me, you're not there to support it. And it helps her get these character dialogue moments out that she hasn't been able to say in the game. So that scene worked for me. I'm like, that works. I know it's not Donna Diego, 
but it worked for Mary Jane to be scream in that little brief moment where you had to fight her. So why wasn't that those moments given to Harry like that? I just don't understand. Uh, you know, he would say a couple hurtful things to Peter, but you could tell it was the symbiote really talking. And I guess that's kind of the case it was with Mary Jane, but you really felt her stuff. And with, you know, with Harry's, I didn't really feel a lot of the things he was slinging at Peter at the end when he's like, oh, Flash used to beat us up and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. But those are just words, you know, like Mary Jane, we've been through this with Mary Jane, with Peter and stuff. We're only just touching on that in this game. And you didn't do a good enough job selling us on the Harry Peter backstory as much, um, you know, with the Flash and like, you know, all that stuff in high school for those lines to really matter the way the Mary Jane lines matter, at least in my opinion. At the end of this all, I would say, you know, the fact that this didn't win any awards at the Game Awards was shocking because there's a lot of artistry in this game. I feel like it is a very good game. I feel like it's uh, worth buying as a Spider-Man fan. But as a Venom fan, I was very disappointed. Um, and the fact that we got a Cletus, even though they didn't call him Cletus, with Wraith storyline and stuff, we got Cletus in a red costume po possibility for a future DLC or story or whatever. We got that before Eddie. And I know we had Amazing Spider-Man 2, which had Carnage as a villain and no Eddie Brock. And that, you know, kind of worked for that game a little bit, but a lot of people did scratch their head and go, why are we, why are we getting Carnage and not Eddie? Um, but it, it was a fun ba boss battle. And the same thing here, like that whole thing with the flame and everything, that was a cool side story. But, you know, I, I really hope that whatever they do next, it does have Eddie as, you know, a symbiote i guess at this point because like again it doesn't make sense to me why he would bond with not venom because that venom symbiote got gets destroyed in this game at the end so for me i'm like well who's he going to bond to and why would he bond to another symbiote and call himself venom um unless there's a sliver of it somewhere that you know connor's has or osborne has maybe that's the case and then he can bond with that version of venom and turn it into a good guy and build it onto a, a redemption arc but again i don't want everything to happen exactly like the comics obviously that's why I said if Harry would have acted more like in keeping with the symbiote, like like the, how the symbiote's handled in some of the comics and in the movie and stuff, that movie was big. And I feel like this game could have capitalized on a little by having Harry in the suit talking, you know, and having these conversations um, and having scenes like that. I think that would have worked more to the, okay, the duality of these characters. I didn't really feel that. You know, I just felt like Harry was a puppet and Harry as a character deserves, deserves more than that. And Venom deserves more than just being a puppeteer. Um, that's Those are both one-dimensional things. And I felt like those both of those characters deserve better, the suit and Harry. So, you know, I can see why this didn't win any awards because if fans voted for it, I think a lot of fans feel like I do. And that shows, I think, by the game not getting any awards. Uh, I think the games that did win awards earned them rightly so. Uh, not that award contests matter that much. It, you know, you shouldn't hold that. If you love Spider-Man 2 and think it's game of the year for you, then it is game of the year for you and F those reward, you know, award shows or whatever. But for me, I was surprised that like, I've, I've been playing Baldur's Gate. I don't love that game. So when that one game of the year, I'm like, ah, it makes sense. There's a lot of people that do play those kind of games and love them. And it is a fun game. Even though I'm not a big fan of the style of game, I'm having fun playing with my friend Alex. And it's a good game you can play with your friends, especially if you like dungeon crawling RPG type games. So for sure. But um, but for me, Alan Wake was game of the year, you know, and it didn't win. So just like Spider-Man didn't win for Spider-Man fans, but Alan Wake didn't win for me. But I still think that's my game of the year because I had so much fun playing it. And I can't wait to play the new, you know, uh, the new final draft version that's coming out like the with the new ending and everything. And then there'll be DLCs for that coming out next year, too. So I'm excited. I loved Alan Wake. That was my game of the year, but it didn't win. And that's OK, because I'm not always eye to eye with award shows and award shows don't really matter overall, but to people in the industry, they do because it sends a message like, hey, our game is valued by someone other than just like hashtags and things you see online. And the fact that Spider-Man didn't get any love, I think sends a big message probably to Insomniac of like, okay, maybe we did misstep somewhere, um, but hopefully that doesn't stop them from continuing to do what they do because I think they're great at what they do. I just feel like to me as a Venom fan and a Harry fan, they dropped the ball here. Whether you agree with me or not, let me know down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But overall, I have to give this game out of five. I would say I give it maybe a two and a half to three, somewhere in that ballpark. Because even though I liked all the, you know, the mechanics and the visuals and a lot of stuff, some of the glitches bummed me out. And there's a couple story moments where I felt like, okay, Miles is just a little too OP here, and they're just doing it for convenience sake. Um, it felt like the Clone Saga, where they were making Ben writing him 
to be the stronger, better, smarter Peter. So by the time they revealed Peter wasn't the real Spider-Man, you would be like, okay, good, because Ben has been killing it lately. That's how I felt like they handled Peter and, and Miles in this. Miles was always making the right choice and making the mature, wise decision, and Peter was the one fumbling a lot. And that kind of hurt the game for me too, from a balance standpoint. Um, to the point where I agree, Peter, you need to take a step back because by the end of this game, you were you tried your best, but you you know <laughs> you pulled it together at the end with Miles, but really you you weren't doing that great of a job. As much of a Spider-Man, you you know you weren't being the best version of Spider-Man as you could be. So it's fine that Miles is going to take over, but I feel like it was purposely written that way, and so that did hurt the game a little bit for me. And then the Venom stuff, all of that stuff, just kind of dropped the ball. So let's let's lean towards a three though, to be fair, because I really enjoyed playing as Venom in that segment and biting off Craven's head in Times Square. All that was pretty awesome. So we'll give it a solid three out of five. Whereas the first game, I think I gave like a four and a half out of five. So that's how much of a dip this one was for me, despite having great graphics, despite all that. But some of the side missions got a little tedious. Um, some of the chasing the things to get the chameleon felt a little too much. Uh, too many spider bots, although 42 is perfect for what it revealed. Uh, I won't spoil that for those of you who want to see that. Um, but yeah, perfect number, right? And I'll be 42 next year. So that's kind of funny too. Um, but yeah, so for me overall, though, three out of five for this game. And uh, and yeah, that's just my thoughts. I want to hear yours down below. We'll keep talking down there. And now that we're done playing the game and uploading the footage and we're done playing, you know, I've done the review now. I promise I will get back to comic books and everything like that and reviewing the comics and getting ready for the new Venom movie. I'll be talking about all that in upcoming episodes. So stay subscribed if you want more of that. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the future. Peace. Peace.